Alright, in this video we are going to discuss the causes of volcanic eruptions and the different eruptive styles. Uh, we're going to first get into um, the causes uh, of volcanic eruptions, some of the details for uh, producing magma, how it moves up through the, uh, the crust and all that, all that good stuff. Um, and then in the next video we're going to get into um, the difference between uh, the different types of eruptions, specific styles, and um, some specific locations and types of eruptions like submarine, phreatic, magmatic uh, eruptions. So uh, the first step uh, is to talk about what causes volcanic eruptions. So if we think back to week one, we talked about plate tectonics. That's a huge uh, major cause for volcanic activity. In um, the cases you see here on the screen, uh, the top two are convergent boundaries where you have subduction and then the bottom is a picture of a divergent boundary. In the case of subduction zones, we have that lithosphere, the oceanic lithosphere that is subducted below the continental crust or in the case of the top picture, some less dense oceanic crust. That crust is full of water and other seafloor sediments, basalt. So as it's being subducted, it reaches a point in, uh, in the, the asthenosphere where things heat up enough. The water that was in that crust is forced out into the surrounding asthenosphere and then causes melting of that asthenosphere. It's called flux melting. So you get a uh, little blob of magma that is now that it, uh, it's uh, liquid, it is now less dense than the surrounding plasticky asthenosphere and so it wants to rise up to the surface where it eventually intersects the surface and we get our volcano. So in each of these cases uh, for subduction zones we have magma migrating through the crust and because that mi migration can be slow, it can be fast, can migrate through various materials, we have a few different things that can happen. Um, one of those is differentiation and we'll talk about those on the next few slides. The other uh, a factor here is composition. So in some cases, like with the case of these subduction zones, your magma is being produced pretty close to the surface, relatively speaking, if you think about the entire earth as a whole. Um, so it has a very different composition than magma that's formed much deeper, so say at a hot spot, which we talked about uh, in some uh, earlier parts of the class. So hot spots have their uh, magma is generated much, much deeper down inside the earth, so we have less felsic minerals and more mafic minerals. So we can start out with a very different composition uh, in the beginning. And then in the case of divergent boundaries, it's also uh, a pretty shallow uh, scenario. Uh, however, it does end up with uh, producing more basaltic or mafic magmas as a result of how little of the crust that magma has to go through to reach the surface. And then, of course, we have gases uh, that it can build up pressure inside of these magma chambers and help cause those explosions to, to occur. So some of the ways that your magma chamber composition changes as it migrates through the crust uh, happens for a variety of reasons. So one uh, reason here, we have an example of two magma chambers that would have started out the same composition but have been migrating slowly through this country rock. So this surrounding rock here uh, would be a different composition than that magma, it would be a basaltic magma. And so as it's migrating through, it's melting the surrounding minerals and into that magma chamber. So we have partial melting of the surrounding rock, incorporating those lower temperature minerals into that magma chamber. So taking a more basaltic magma chamber and maybe changing it to a little bit more felsic as a result of that partial melting of those, those rocks. The other way is if our two magma chambers, maybe one that was sitting there for a while, lots of partial melting, um, lots of what's called fractional crystallization that we'll talk about next. So it's really different magma composition uh, as a result of just sitting there isolated on its own. And then we have another magma chamber that is migrating maybe a little faster and hasn't had all that time for uh, incorporating in those more felsic minerals. So it has more of a basaltic composition. Those two can intersect and then we can get a change um, in that magma chamber as a result. The last is called fractional crystallization, also referred to as differentiation. And this is where you have your magma chamber sitting stationary, it could be moving, uh, 
but it is cooling as it's sitting there. The surrounding rock is much cooler, so we have that magma chamber cooling over time. So if you think back to week two, we talked about Bowen's reaction series. This is where we have our minerals crystallizing at specific temperatures. So once that magma cools and reaches uh, those temperatures in Bowen's reaction series, we can start to crystallize your olivine, your pyroxene, and those, those minerals then crystallize, they're so solids, they're more dense, they sink to the bottom of that magma chamber, and now all those mafic minerals and ultramafic minerals have been pulled out of that magma chamber. So we end up with a much more felsic magma chamber as a result. So if you think about our scenarios here, our two different convergent plate boundaries, an ocean-ocean convergent boundary, there's less of that lithosphere for the magma to have to rise through, so we don't have as much of that differentiation or as much of the partial melting occurring, whereas at a continental oceanic boundary, you have a lot thicker crust for that magma to go through, so you have a lot more time for these two processes to occur and change the composition of that magma chamber. So as, as a result, we can get very, very different rocks erupting at the surface. So volcanic gases are another uh, hazardous factor uh, that, that can impact our volcanic eruptions. Um, so these are going to, uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the hazards of these when we get to the volcanic hazard section of the class. But basically you have all these volcanic gases that are dissolved in the magma. As that magma rises to shallower and shallower depths in the earth, the pressure decreases, and those dissolved gases then can be released. And so we get little bubbles of those uh, of those gases as a result. So think about opening a soda bottle. You open it up, get that pressure change, and you get your bubbles. So when you have a low viscosity, so you have a basaltic magma that's easy to flow, the gases can easily get out. Whereas if you have a sticky, high viscosity magma, those gases can get trapped inside that magma. They can't escape as easily, so that pressure can build and can cause a very explosive volcanic eruption. So we're going to uh, hit pause, uh, end this video here with the, production, uh, the ways that magma can be produced, and then we're going to get into the different styles of volcanic eruptions in the next chunk.